<laughs> oh my gosh, what a process. What up? Okay. First of all, shout out to uh, Zigzag. I saw I saw you and Awake and Brave. That's fucking badass. You guys have uh, <laughs> similar intensities and uh, the passions. So it was awesome to see you guys get together like that. So yeah, I don't know. We'll just we'll just kind of see where this talk goes. I find that for me, and I kind of feel like for a lot of us who vibe on the same uh, sine wave, so to speak, uh, we kind of just have to go with the flow and go with when inspiration uh, strikes, when uh, when the muse of the moment arises. And just go with the flow and not overthink shit, which is just uh, a constant uh, reminder for me is uh, constantly overthinking stuff to the point where uh, you, you literally disengage from the uh, felt experience, from that connection of the body because you've uh, lost balance of heart and mind and the connection and the dance between the two. One can't necessarily overpower the other if we wish to be in a balanced state, uh, a, a most, you could say optimal state. It's a, a more natural state where we're in that flow state. So yeah, I was kind of contemplating on uh, doing this one, and uh, showing some exercises, and uh, stretches, some yoga techniques uh, that I do, but when I set that up to do it, I, I, just, I just wasn't feeling it, so I mean, I, I wasn't gonna, I don't know. <laughs> So here we are. So here we are watching, or, or we're going to, while I talk, we're going to watch this, uh, <laughs> uh, this, uh, Thai massage. And, uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, know what ASMR is or if you're into anything like that, but I find that a lot of things bring me into that, like, ASMR type state of, of just, utter relaxation and oftentimes it's whenever I'm witnessing say either someone in the flow state so I mean I I get into that state whenever I witness beauty and grace and uh, an artist uh, just flowing uh, no matter what kind of art form like it, it's very uh, soothing to me it feels very familiar whenever I see or I'm around someone or in uh, proximity or uh, feel a resonance of someone talking and, and, and it can just be it, it can go down to this, the very uh, subtlety of just looking into someone's eyes and seeing that gaze and that awareness in the eyes the knowingness so, I found this on YouTube, uh, the, this girl doing a Thai massage, and this is, this is, uh, like, just top, top, top of the line here, like, uh, master, uh, this is very, very masterful, because, because of all the way that she uses her body, uh, to create fulcrum points, and, and to really get in there, so, I mean, it's, 
it's it's really amazing watching the masters work or paint or whatever kind of art form, dance, just any kind of movement. If we allow ourselves and just soak in the information, uh, we we can learn so much just just from observing and not constantly engaging the mind and asking questions or feeling like we need to, uh, you know, uh, oh, teacher, like, raise your hand and uh, ask the question, but but remembering how to observe masters at work and allowing their movement and their presence to answer your own questions, allowing the questions to arise naturally, and then also within those questions allowing the answers to flower forth and it will be a natural process that happens you don't need to force anything or seek an answer it will it will spring forth whenever you allow it and this is just something you'll experience the deeper you go into uh, deep inner work you'll realize the answers that are within the questions and how they're all the same thing essentially it's all perspective and how you choose to engage it <sighs> which side should I be on All right, so let's potentially talk a little bit about uh, potentially talk about some yoga, what that means, uh, the westernized version of it. Um, how is, everything comes back down to mentality, how, how we choose to engage something. So whenever you see these people going to yoga classes, they're only going to get benefit from doing that because of, of the engagement. But the trap that is set up is that they keep going back to these classes and that can I've experienced this for myself because whenever I first started doing yoga, I didn't go to yoga classes. I, I found pretty much everything in my life I found through being still and allowed it to present itself to me. So this is uh, the same with what you may call yoga. So before I ever started going to any yoga classes, I, I had a, a deep uh, personal practice which was uh, meditation. First of all, like, I, I combine, and this is basically like what I wanted to get into like, with this is uh, everything is one thing essentially. So whenever we combine the aspects of say things like yoga or things like Tai Chi or things like exercise. All of this, those things can be combined into one practice. And, and that's how I started out was, was doing this and not necessarily calling it any one thing, just engagement. Like, it's just movement. Movement is movement. Moving energy is, is just that. So call it what you want. Put any kind of label or terminology or, or dissect one little aspect of it and decide to call the aspect, you know, Tai Chi or Reiki or, you know, calisthenics, whatever kind of workout. It's, it's, it's all just movement. It's, it's a focused aspect of movement, of energy, energetics, and the flow of life within and without. So, whenever I first started going to yoga classes, um, first of all, 
I'm not going to go to any kind of a yoga class where uh, the quote-unquote teacher is uh, <laughs> very has a has a very westernized mentality um, to where if they don't really understand the deeper aspects of what yoga really is, then uh, that's that's not the kind of class that I'm going to go to. So really, whenever I go to a yoga class, it's it's essentially uh, to test the vibes, to test the waters there, to see the, the mentalities at play, to see how deep people have really went into this. <clears throat> so my yoga teachers have always been... Uh, fairly impressed with my level of uh, not just understanding of yoga, but just uh, the calmness within me and the engagement, the focus. And so they were always uh, very surprised to find out that I I'd not been going to yoga classes for very long at all, but my own practice was a uh, was one where I sought to dissolve boundaries and just engage in flow. So my type of practice was a uh, like a spontaneous movement, spontaneous flow of the moment, allowing inspiration to guide me. And listening to my body, if I had any kind of pains or areas that, that needed certain attention, I would try to really work my way into that part of the body. As we're seeing here, she's working into that body. And this is where you see, like, the masterfulness here. She's using her leg to create more pressure on her arm to really dig into that. So not only does this create more pressure, this, this saves her arms, actually. So she's using bigger body uh, muscles and groups to to save her smaller ones and also get the same if not more of a of an effect so yes this is this is the thing with uh, going to classes is uh we think that or, or it's, it's easy to get caught in a mentality that you, you just need to keep going back to these classes or essentially what this does is it keeps you stuck in one level. And yes, you, of course you will progress and it's all dependent upon the person and the individual. But where the real magic comes into play is whenever you allow yourself to create your own practice and engage that with, because that's where the real magic of yoga is, or uh, meditation, or any kind of deep inner work or healing, is that you are engaged with you and the all, and dissolving the those boundaries, the illusion that you have allowed to uh, allow yourself to be taught, you know, how things work. So the greatest benefit that, that we're going to get from any kind of a practice is whenever we can really dive down deep within ourselves. 
and allow this spontaneous movement and spontaneous flow along with a, a acute awareness of the movements in the energy within. An awareness of where that energy maybe needs to be directed towards certain areas of the body. So yeah, let's talk about spine health a little bit as we watch this uh, lovely lady work on the spine and shoulders. I would say like if there's one thing to focus on with stretching or even exercising at all or any kind of movement, it's just how important uh, working the spine is and having a a fluid and flexible spine. So finding finding your own uh, ways, because every body, every body's body is going to be different. Everyone has their own little uh, little weird kinks and you know uh, knots and uh, tension points, places where energy is trapped. Everyone's going to be different. So, I mean, everyone's going to need their own type of yoga or type of stretching specifically for the, their body. So this is why it's very important to engage your own practice and go with what your body needs, not necessarily just following an instructor. And and it is isn't. It can, it can be very beneficial to know, to learn just as much as you can about any kind of stretching or movement. But don't get stuck in, in the ways, you know. Don't don't get stuck in any kind of mentality. Allow it to inspire you to, to keep diving deeper and engage more and more. But there, there can be times where we become stuck in our ways or stuck in a certain mode or a certain form. And then that's, that's, we're only going to progress to a certain point before we, we just, you know, become comfortable with that and then stop there. Or we decide to find something else. So some simple things to do for spine health. There's a just a forward, just a forward fold, and allowing your 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 back and your spine to just decompress. That that in and of itself is a huge uh, underrated stretch right there. Just a simple forward bend and allowing your spine to decompress. Now you can get into uh, say. Like hanging, like suspended from, like you know, like if you're doing a uh, pull up or something, and just hanging, and that that will also allow your spine to decompress, uh, you know, that way. And then you can also do it, like say, doing a handstand or something that's going to allow your spine to decompress in the opposite way there. And both those things, both those things are excellent to help decompress the spine. But also, always go with where you're at. Understand where you're at currently. And even if you see uh, other people who are very, very much more flexible than you or that can do more and different things than you can, understand that they, they've been probably been doing this for quite a long time. They've spent the time and work to engage in their body and work up to this point. So, just realize that, you know, start where you're at currently. Realize where you're at and work your way up from there. So, try new things out. Engage certain stretches and modes. But, 
push yourself. That's important to push yourself. But realize where you're at and don't get discouraged if you can't do something. I mean, that's it's kind of a really silly thing to do. But also, that's it's kind of the mentality that a lot of people are in in, in the civilized Western world is that they they want to be what they see on on the TV and the magazines and and everything, which which is you know aspire to be more or to be or to grow. That's that's awesome. Just that just realize that there's. Everyone has their own natural way of, of growth and of engagement. So find what speaks to you and, and build from that. So yeah, there are several different kind of stretches and yoga postures for, for spine. There's a, like different kind of spinal balances. Uh, just being in like a push-up position, or it's called plank, and then working with different areas uh, within that. Um, different kind of back bends and supported back bends. But once again, work with where you're at. If you feel like any kind of tense pain whenever you're doing any kind of spinal work, like back out of it. Uh, this is also going to come come down to like uh, alignment issues that we have, uh, spinal alignment, uh, moving in and out of alignment. Um, I kind of liken uh, whenever you really get into yoga and realize what it's doing for your physical body. And, and how you can utilize the stretches uh, to recalibrate. It's kind of like your own personalized form of uh, chiropractic uh, readjustment, essentially. You can use it for that. And then also, I kind of want to talk a little bit about like uh, the ideas of uh, rehab and prehab. Like, whenever we get an injury and we're rehabbing something, that's it's very important in my experience to continue to get blood flow and the fluids pumping to that area of injury. And of course, we want to be careful not to re-injure something. But also, don't be afraid to to go into that pain a little bit. To to listen to it, to allow it, and to listen to it, and not not just seek the instant release or the the pain relief or go towards the drugs. Because within that pain is a very important message. It's a message of healing, of how to heal yourself. And if you listen to this pain, it will tell you where you need to direct your energy, how you need to direct your energy. And it can be in the form of movements, it can be in the form of just a focus. I'll probably get into a lot a lot of the deeper stuff with with the energy work and with the more advanced aspects of this stuff in, in later videos but for right now I just kinda wanted to keep it simple so rehabbing is very important to do in the correct manner So I would recommend utilizing breath work, pranayama, uh, Wim Hof even, getting your blood soaked, uh, saturated with prana, and then 
utilizing your rehab or your stretches or your energy work even. And that oxygen rich and prana rich blood is going to rapidly increase the healing within any aspect of your body. And then prehab. And really everything that we do is prehab. And if you choose to work out, if you choose to do yoga, if you choose to engage the body in any kind of movement or any kind of way, this is prehab. This is, this is strengthening your body so that you're more resilient to injury. And if you do injure yourself, you're able to heal much, much more, uh, much quicker. If you've already opened up channels, if you've already done a lot of clearing work, then the rehab is going to become much more, much less of a uh, time expenditure and much, much easier to to allow, allow the healing to happen. I also want to talk about, uh, what's Okay, so uh, with with the spine and how most people in today's world have uh, really fuckered up spines, we we have to think about like you know the root causations of any and all ailments of any kind of disease. Where did it stem from? And yes, doctors are going to tell you, you know, this or that, or, you know, all they know for sure. But, I mean, ultimately, they're just giving you an educated guess, if you want to call it educated. So, with, say with, like, a bent spine, or a spine that has... An abnormal, an abnormality to it. If this is caused by, say, an accident, then you're going to have to go about your rehabbing uh, in, in a much more specialized and specific manner than, say, if it's caused from a lifetime of posture, bad posture. And this is usually the case with, with a lot of people that don't even realize the kind of spines they have um, from the sitting that we've done, been forced to do, say, in our indoctrination systems, sitting in uncomfortable positions, uh, encouraging bad posture because of that. So just think about that, like, just, just from all those years of, of sitting in an uncomfortable position, hours on end. That right there is starting people out to be very misaligned. And ultimately, if your spine's unhealthy, it's going to cause a whole myriad of, of other ailments and uh, things that could potentially be wrong uh, symptoms, essentially. So, the health system is just going to help you treat these symptoms and give you reasons why you need to take certain things to treat these symptoms. And I'm not saying that it's all like that. Like, you're not going to find a, a doctor that, or, or a health practitioner or a holistic person that isn't going to give you sound and good advice. I'm just saying by far, 
the whole system is set up so that everyone is dumbed down and, and the people telling you how to heal yourself they've been misled as well so with spine health just we want to think about movement and engaging all the fluids within the spine, within the body, um, any kind of movement or cardio that you can do. Find, find some form of cardio that works for you. Uh, say, just a simple jumping or, or jump roping or a simple light jog. Or if you can increase the intensity of the cardio, go with what feels best for you and work your way from up from there. And for me, this was a process. This was indeed a process because I was never really uh, very fit or healthy until after, probably when I was in college, I would say. And I started, and I was able to kind of live by myself uh, a little bit more and actually start to have time, more time to myself just just to think and contemplate things. So it took me, but but really, once you really start to get focused in on it, it, it doesn't really take that much time at all. And really all it just takes is a little bit of dedication and just constant engagement. Doing what you can when you can and not making excuses. Just getting in there and, and doing it and engaging. You can, you can do a little bit at a time. You can do it in bursts, which has kind of been uh, my life experience. Is <sighs> bursts within you know periods of time. I will go in and out of uh, being very fit and, and fluid and, and, and everything to moments to periods where I, I don't do all that much. So I would recommend um, self-massage self and this is also something you can utilize with, with your yoga stretches. You can you can basically massage yourself um, on the ground or whatever you're doing it on. Um, especially your spine. You can massage your own spine by doing certain stretches. And this can feel uh, very good. Have a lot of different kind of releases doing this. Definitely would recommend... Uh, just lying on your back, putting your knees into your chest, and just gently rolling back and forth, rolling up and down uh, the muscles in, in your spine, and just just engaging in feeling. And we'll talk real quick about just uh, any kind of healing. Any kind of healing... Depending upon um, our, our dis-ease, that's going to that's going to dictate you know how how we should or how we should go about engaging this or what things we should do. But first and foremost, it's always wise to clean everything out first. So if you have an, like, an acute pain, an acute injury, say a sprain, or you think you broke something, and what what I would recommend is doing fast, 
and then also consuming your own waters, doing an Oren fast, and then all, even doing compresses with the Oren on that body part. That is that is also pr pretty pretty magical stuff. So first, you want to do the cleaning work, the fasting, the Oren. Then you can start reintroducing stuff like uh, certain kinds of foods or herbs for whatever whatever body part you're working with. Say if it's like more bone related or skeletal related. Um, look into uh, the doctrine of signatures. And as far as like uh, which plants look like certain body parts, right? This is this is by design, you know. There's no coincidences here. So say certain foods, like what what are, and this is with any body part or, or organ. Like ask yourself, well, what are foods that look like this? So what are foods that look like uh, the spine? that, that uh, resemble the spine that what what comes to mind allow yourself to kind of just be inspired what comes to mind whenever you think about a certain body part allow yourself just to go with the feeling there and engage that so celery is going to be very good Think about what that looks like. Think about cracking into some celery. What that sounds like. What that feels like. It looks very much like a bone. <sighs> Think about uh, cactuses. They're very spiny like. There's uh, several different types of cactuses that are uh, very, very good for you. about uh, bamboo. Bamboo is going to be very good for flexibility, for bone health. Say different kind of herbs like uh, rhubarb or anything like the stem of, um, of, of certain plants. Say like broccoli or cauliflower. <laughs> then you can also get into herbs. There's there's going to be herbs that that even with the names. Uh, the names will even like indicate or let you know, you know, there's actually an herb called bone set. I wonder I wonder why it's called bone set. <laughs> there's there's herbs that you will find or flowers that will remind you of, of certain organs or certain body parts or depending on uh, how deep you've looked into your own being, uh it'll remind you of certain uh molecular structures or cellular structures or uh, certain different kinds of tissue even then I also recommend utilizing your hot and cold Utilizing your extremes, finding homeostasis within those two, but also engaging both of them. Witnessing for yourself, experiment. Always experiment and test things out for yourself and see what it does for you. I just had someone earlier today uh, say that, that that could kill me by doing those two extremes. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about what else to do anymore, but, but laugh whenever people tell me uh, of uh, the harmful uh, things that can happen to me with, with, with the things that I engage with say, uh, fasting, frequent fasting, or uh, 
doing extreme hot than extreme cold. <clears throat> so I, I, I like to share things with people, but oftentimes, you know, the people have already made up their minds. Uh, they've convinced themselves already, or they've allowed themselves to be convinced that oh, something is a certain way. And so, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to, I don't, I don't, I don't argue with people, uh, or really get into debates. Like, if someone wants to discuss something or contemplate, like, that's awesome. Like, uh, we, we can do that and engage. But I mean, if someone wants to, uh, project, projectile vomit their verbal diarrhea, all over me because of their BS belief structures, belief systems, bullshit. Uh, they, they can go find someone else that will uh, entertain that with them and, and get a kick out of that and be drama mamas together because that's that's not something I uh, I engage with them. So yeah, these are just some, some simple things here. Uh, essentially, it's all just reminders of the things that you already really knew deep down. Because, I mean, really, we, we already know all this shit deep down. We really do. So really, the only thing we're... we're doing here is really just reminding each other of the truth which is you know basically just dissolving illusions rebuilding connections remembering the gnosis within how to engage that Figur figuring out how to be your own guide how to find your own answers to your own questions and how to rethink how you view things. Because that's that's how we engage the world, how we see the world. It's, we've been taught to see and think of things in a certain manner. And this has helped in creating what we experience for ourselves. This creates our reality. So, the more we can go into, say, a meditative state or a mode of awareness to where you don't have to engage th thought or, en or engage your reality with words. You just experience it as experience. This is really when, when everything starts to open up to you. You, you, have, you start to... Because... Your language transforms from just just using words, and yes, with with most people, you're going to have to use words because that's that's how we've been taught to communicate. Not with all of us, but with most people. But I'm talking about whenever you're just by yourself or or engaging with with your reality to where you don't need to form words to engage your reality you just experience it for what it is then you'll you'll tap into this language and awareness that allows you it allows an expansion to open up your mind uh dissolves the box of language of of the language that you've been taught. And in that dissolving, the, the, the real, the actual language opens up and it becomes, you become aware to it and you open up to it. Everything opens up to you. You, you feel and engage this as within, so without. So you'll find that you start thinking in manners that is non-linear. 
when, whenever you whenever you let go of the words, you will start to engage the mind in ways where there is no more past and present. You experience this simultaneously. Oftentimes, you will find yourself within the singularity or the monad of the moment, within the eye of the hurricane, you will experience yourself having multiple experiences of both past and future and contemplations within both at the same time. And then, as well, you will begin to engage in, say, dream language and tap into... And this is really kind of where we're all kind of uh, heading in that we're reuniting and remembering our original languages, how to utilize our uh, all of our faculties of the mind, what, what the mind really is. And how to engage that. And, and witnessing and, and experiencing what, what may limit that. And then allowing that flow and that ease to just happen. And at first, you're just, this is going to take... You're only going to experience, you know, spurts of it, or just uh, little fleeting moments, even at first, because this is this is a process of unlearning uh, the indoctrination that that you've been taught, how you've been taught to imprison your own mind and go along with this prison. So breaking free of this prison starts with you. It starts with the individual. And remembering what you are, who you are, what you can really do. Engaging with lucidity, with awareness in all aspects of beingness. Your waking life, your dream life, seeing how those two are intimately connected. And then the deeper you go, you'll realize the things that you can really do within the dream state. And the more lucid you become, the more you will realize that you actually have a, you can call it, or liken it to a second body, or what people term as the astral body. And with that body, you can really start to dive into the subtle realms and the subtle aspects of what reality is. The non-linear aspects of it. And what you really have access to. So yeah, that'll be enough for now. I was going to read a little bit about some yoga philosophy from this book, but... Nah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't necessarily like reading from books, unless it's from a few select books. Or if it's from a book, I just randomly open up to the page, which is basically how I read anything nowadays. I divine. I don't. I don't really read things as much as I just allow the message to present itself to me. And that's how I would recommend people uh, just engage life, allow the inspiration to happen, and be brave enough to follow that inspiration. Release your fear and engage in that jubilation of the flow. Rejoice in that inspiration and 
know that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks or judgment or <laughs> placing judgment upon you or don't place judgment upon yourself. Don't allow what people may or may not think to have any kind of sway on you. You just do you and allow that to be enough. Know that and truly grow You just got to flow. Go with the flow and feel it and allow yourself to open up to your true language. Remember how to read from that book, which is written all around you. It's just we've, we've been taught to not see it for what it is or to take it for granted or to dissect it and only see aspects of it instead of seeing the totality of it. And the interconnectedness of all. Alright. That's enough for now. Love y'all.